Good morning, everyone. Um, It's good to be back with you, and thank you for the warm welcome that you have given to me. Um, If there's anyone visiting here this morning, um, a warm welcome to you also. Our notices this morning, emergency cover during July up to the 24th, Canon John Woods, and after the 25th, 25th and afterwards, uh, Philip Bryson, Reverend Philip Bryson, um, will do emergency cover. I'm sure someone has got the phone numbers and so on. Uh, You'll know where to get those. Next week, um, it's Holy Communion, and uh, that's being led by the Reverend Dean Raymond Ferguson. And don't forget tea and coffee afterwards. You're very welcome to... um, join the fellowship afterwards for a cup of tea or coffee. This is the day that the Lord has made. Lord, direct our thoughts. Help us to pray and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, let us worship. Let us join together in the hymn number 146, The Kingdom of God is Justice and Joy. seated. (coughs) Let your hearts be still and know that I am God. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the psalm for today is Psalm 66, verses 1 to 8, and we'll say alternative verses. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name and make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice to him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our Lord, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall. Amen. Um, our reading from the Gospel is Luke chapter 10 verses 1 to 11, and continuing 16 to 20. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. But whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Just let's pray. Father, prepare our hearts to receive your word. Open our ears to hear your voice. And cover over anything that is said that is not of you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Just a few thoughts, three in fact, from the readings for this Sunday. Um, We have read Luke chapter 10, and two of those thoughts are, are within that chapter. And the third is from Galatians, which was another reading for today, which we haven't covered in the service, but you can look at it at home, Galatians 6 and verse 9. The first thought, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The second, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And the third, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Jesus spoke these words, the the, the first two, to the 72 that he had sent out as his disciples to visit all the places that he was going to. In in reading a a commentary on this, it referred to the fact that I think 70 uh, countries are mentioned in Genesis as being the rest of the world. So in a sense, I think in some translation, in some uh, documents, this is referred to as sending out the 70. In, in, in our version of the Bible, it's saying 72. But it, it's in a sense, if you like, Jesus sending people out to all the world, just as he gave the commission later on. They were only being sent out to the local area, but there was a sense in which it was to all the world. And you remember the context. They had come back rejoicing at what they had seen. They had seen people committing themselves to following Jesus. They had seen people healed, and they had seen uh, demons cast out from people. But Jesus says, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's more important than the miracles you have seen. It's more important than the victories that you have witnessed. This one thing, that your names are written in heaven. There is a sense in which our names are written in heaven when we are born. God knows us. He loves us. He numbers the very hairs on our head, he tells us. He has a record in heaven. He wants all of us to remain in that book. And he gave of himself to ensure that we remain there. But if you reject him, fail to repent and call on him, in this life, you will have been responsible for your name being expunged, being removed from, your, from the book in heaven. A very sobering thought. When I was preparing this, it came afresh to me because I, I was thinking, you know, there comes a time when you accept Jesus and you your name goes into the book of life. But there's a sense in which your name is always in the book of life, and it's only you, by your neglect of Jesus, that results in it coming out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Does each one of us here this morning know and rejoice that my name is written in heaven? This is the gospel. This is the good news that God has provided the way for us to be able to stand before him forgiven and righteous. 
a free gift from God. You know, I'm very humble about standing up here myself, and it's only by the grace of God that I am able to do that. I feel awed with these garments on, but in a sense, it reminds me that I have put on the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that I have repented and bowed my knee to Jesus and asked him into my heart and put on his righteousness. That's what I think when I put this on, because otherwise I couldn't stand here and talk to you. As Paul puts it, how will we escape if we neglect, if we refuse such a great and simple salvation? It's my prayer that no one leaves this church this morning without the assurance of knowing that your name is written in heaven and remains in the Lamb's book of life. Do not procrastinate. Do not put off the decision. Today, now, is the best time. Our second thought concerns the sending out of the 72. In some manuscripts, as I was saying, 70 is the number mentioned, and that refers in an abstract way to the whole world. God so loved the world, he is sending out the gospel to the whole world. And he says here, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And this remains a serious challenge to the church in the broadest sense. I'm going to digress and talk to you about my soft fruit garden. Yesterday I went out into a section of my garden which is uh, soft fruits, black currants, red currants, gooseberries, a few blueberry bushes and some raspberry canes. And, and just as I went down there, it taught me a lesson about what Jesus is saying here about the harvest being plentiful, but the workers are few. Other priorities had meant that I had not checked the progress of the fruit, not just as often as I should have. And when I looked at the damage that had been caused by the world, as it were, the caterpillars, the birds, and other creatures of the night. Much of the fruit had been damaged. It reminded me of the damage caused to individuals by the world, the flesh, and the devil. The weaker the church is in carrying out the command of Jesus to go into all the world, the greater the havoc wrought. To quote from last Sunday, the sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. In my garden, the workers were few, and we lost a lot of good fruit. Some fruit had become overripe, and been taken by the birds. Perhaps an example of those who have never heard the gospel and have gone on to follow other gods. Some had been badly damaged by the caterpillars. You know, once the caterpillar takes the leaf, the fruit on that branch doesn't grow anymore. It just stays small. It withers. And how that is like people who have allowed the enemy to operate in their lives over a long period of time. They don't grow into the people that God wants them to be. And some fruit had become wizened up and died and reminded me of those for whom it was too late. I galvanized Pamela, 
my wife, and we spent a few hours collecting and rescuing many large juicy fruit, but still much remains to be reached. And I am annoyed just over the fruit because I planted the bushes to see them going to waste. How do you think our loving Father in heaven feels when he looks down at the human harvest? The hymn writer caught the essence of that. I think it's a tune I've been hearing this morning as well. Filled with compassion for all creation, Jesus came into a world that was lost. There was but one way that he could save us, only through suffering death on the cross. God, you are waiting. Your heart is breaking for all the people who live on the earth. Stir us to action, filled with your passion for all the people who live in the earth. Great is your passion for all the people, living and dying without knowing you, having no Savior. They're lost forever if we don't speak out and lead them to you. Jesus said, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out more workers. So this morning, let us think about redoubling our prayers, calling on God to send out more workers. The Bible teaches us that when we know we pray in the will of God, then we know we have our answer. And we know it's God's will that no one should perish. So when we pray for God to send out people into the harvest field, we should believe and know that he will answer that prayer because it's according to his will. And my final thought for today's reading is found in Galatians 6. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. There's a warning here. And why did Paul include this warning? He knew how great and expansive the work was. In the flesh or by ourselves, we cannot manage. There's a real danger of getting weary in the work of the Lord. Here are two reasons. Plain physical fatigue trying to do too much, not being wise of ourselves. And it's easy to say that, but it's very easy to fall into the trap. We ignore God's example in creation, and we don't take a rest. We ignore Jesus' example in withdrawing from the crowd to rest and pray. So let us be wise in our service. Let us not become overwrought that we become exhausted and weary. Because that leads to the second problem, lack of prayer. Working for the Lord has taken over. We are so tired and stressed, we complain. We we become like the priests in Malachi 1, What a burden. What a weariness it is. Our work has become empty. The spiritual motivation has gone. No longer a work of faith, a labor of love, and the patience of hope. Faith, love, and hope. The cement of our work. How easy it is to slip into this. I know I am guilty. The answer? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In the words of the sermon last week, keeping company with God is the answer. So just to summarize in conclusion, Above all else, most important, 
is this one thing, that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Apostle John devoted his whole gospel for this purpose. He writes in John 20, verse 31, These are written, referring to the deeds of Jesus he had recorded, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. For those of you who are disciples, you know the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Therefore, continue to pray, redouble your efforts, calling on God to send out more workers. It's his will, so it will happen. And finally, the warning and the promise to all saints. Let us not become weary in doing good. Let us not give up. And the promise, at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. So keep company with God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, I have delayed and closed you out <clears throat> for too long. Forgive me. I turn away from my selfishness. I turn to you. Help me. And in the words of the hymn, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side nor wander from the pathway, if thou wilt be my guide. Amen. Let us worship God in the hymn number 605, Will You Come and Follow Me?
Let us remain standing as we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe and trust in God Jesus Christ who gave mankind. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in our God, our Son and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the church worldwide that we may all be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name you may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those known to us in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace. In particular, we remember Martha McGee, who's entered hospital, and we also again remember Andrew and Joanne. Stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those who mourn, and hope to those in despair. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand to sing hymn number 478. Go forth and tell.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through your love, make us servants to one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the land of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you all for the benefit you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen. And now let us say the grace to one another, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.